Yeah, okay, so um, there was just a question asked me that I'm going to be answering just as uh, we set up our guest speaker. Um, the question uh, is another great one posed uh, here by Labby, um, and it uh, concerns the, um, the, the construct of, of Markov modeling and the question as to whether it um, counts as a dynamic modeling tradition and a system science modeling tradition. I had ex previously expressed um, a degree of reservation in classifying it as a dynamic modeling tradition, although I thought it could reasonably by someone, someone could hold that it's a dynamic modeling tradition. I argued there was not a system science tradition. And um, Levy was interested in why this was. And so I'll, I'll just offer um, uh, a few very brief comments on this while Sha Yan is getting set up. So my perspective is following. With respect to a dynamic, whether it's a dynamic modeling tradition, um, well, it does represent the state of the system. In that state, in, in, a, in a Markov chain or Markov, um, Markov model, um, as traditionally used, there's a state of the system. And there's an evolution of the state of that system over time as defined by a transition matrix, which is a constant transition matrix. So if we have a state of the system x, and uh, we could say that's the state of time t. And if we want to get the state of time t plus 1, we multiply it times the transition matrix A, and we get A times X. Um, we, we take the multi matrix multiplication times the vector, and we get out a new state, <coughs> which is the state at time X plus 1. I'm oh, sorry, time T plus 1. And by successively iterating, we can get the state uh, at, at time T plus 2, time T plus 3. It's, you know, by successfully multiplying times A. Um, this is something which uh, you could argue is dynamic because at any one time we have state and the state changes over time. Um, what's not to love about that? Um, and, and you can be excused for, for thinking that. The reason I, I um, say I'm not, uh, I lack conviction it's dynamic is, uh, is more that with dynamic modeling in general, most dynamic modeling traditions, um, in order to understand the behavior of that system um, at a later time, say time t plus, you know, time t, uh, t sub n, not t sub 1, t sub 2, but t sub n, um, we need to actually simulate along the way. We need to simulate time t, the, the state of time t, and to say time t plus 1, time t plus 2, and so on all the way up to time t plus n. There's no shortcut. We, we simulate all along the way to get the state of time t sub n, much as with, for those who are computer scientists, much as to know if a, if a program uh, is going to, to halt, we can't really know that for sure. All we can do is run it for a certain amount of time and see if it does definitely halt by a certain time. But the point is, with dynamic modeling traditions, generally we have this feature that you you need to simulate it to know the, uh, the state of the system. And um, this is not true for, for uh, markup modeling because we could simply take, if we want to know its state at time n, um, we can simply take a to the n times its state at time 1 um, or time 0. And we'll get its, what state it's in at time n. Um, so we don't have to actually simulate it along the way. So that's one consideration. It's a mathematical consideration, and I have real questions about whether it disqualifies it. I, I think maybe I'm just being overly picky. Um, but then there's the question of why isn't it a system science tradition? Why did I hold that, while it's arguable it's dynamic modeling, uh, I don't view it as a system science, um, a system science tradition. Well, the answer is system science is almost by define and by definition the science of the whole. It's the science of systems where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And with respect to dynamic modeling, these are systems where if we consider, and we can define this in many ways, but to, they're almost invariably nonlinear, where if we apply it to uh, a variable x, this is not a very good marker, 
Um, we apply it to a variable x, um, and, and let's suppose x is a vector, say a vector of s, e, i, r. Um, and we consider applying the system to that vector. Maybe it's stepping it one step forward. This is going to be, cannot simply be reduced to the sum of the response of the system to each component of the vector in isolation. So if this is, for example, um, S E I R, so it's a function applied to S E I R, so a certain number of susceptibles, mm -hmm. certain number of exposed, a certain number of infectives, and a certain number of recoveries. That's not different, that, that's not the same as F applied to just S and then zero for all of the others, plus F applied to um, zero and then um, E, E for the next, E alone, and then zero, zero. Um, and then similarly for, gosh, this is horrible. Um, so uh, uh, here E, um, and plus F applied to uh, zero, zero, I, zero, and F applied to some uh, zero, 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 R, um, R, um, there. It's, it's quite different. So if we have a, if we have a system that's uh, a system science tradition, uh, it's within the system science tradition, nonlinearity is the typical feature of it. And this prevents us from just saying, the pieces are the whole. Um, when we have a system that's linear, we're going to have an equivalence here. These two are equal. Um, we can take, to figure out how the system responds to something, we can take that something apart into pieces, how the system responds to each of those pieces, and sum them together to understand how it responds to the, to the whole thing. We do this in engineering all the time. We take signals apart into pieces. We take the fast Fourier transform, for example, um, of a system and we decompose a signal into a sum. We say this signal over time is just the sum of this signal of one frequency plus you know times a certain coefficient plus uh, another frequency times another coefficient etc. Now we figure out how it responds to each of those frequencies and we sum up those responses to get the sum the response to the whole wave. That's what we do in a linear system. In a nonlinear system, this is not going to be true. Case in point, for your case of an um, infectious disease model, why doesn't this work for an infectious disease model? That if you have a certain number of people here, 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 and here, that it's just the sum of the, let's suppose F is step the model forward by a year. Why isn't this the case that these are equal? Why is it not equal? Anyone? Yeah, it's a nonlinear system is exactly right. And particularly, let's be very concrete about what's nonlinear about it. What's nonlinear is the, the transmission process. So to have transmission, you need susceptibles and you need infectives. And in fact, the system is going to the system is going to involve at at uh, this flow here, this infection flow. Um, it's going to involve an equation here for a classic mathematical epidemiology model that is going to have a term S times I. So this is the number of susceptibles, this is the number of infectives, and some other factors. And if, I, if I were to write it out in its full glory, it would be something like S times I over N, uh, and then it'll be uh, we're going to have a beta, and we're going to have a, um, a, a, a C here, uh, which is going to be the, the contact rate. Um, so it's S times C times I over N times beta. Um, and I'll, I'll leave out the dot. Um, so this is a nonlinear term in the system state because there's an S times I. So we can't simply say, if we have you know, 1,000 susceptibles and one infective, or say 1,000 susceptibles and 100 infectives, we can't simply say, well, you know, we'll consider the system response if there's only susceptibles 
of, of 1,000 and zero anyone else, only expose of, of an initial number, let's say zero, and, every, and everything else is zero, only 100 infectives and no susceptibles. We can't sum it up that way. It doesn't work. Um, it's it's nonlinear. The system is nonlinear, so we can't decompose the state into its pieces. This is one consequence of nonlinearity, and um, it it is that that characteristic of nonlinear systems is 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 generalized into system science methods at whole. System science methods, by definition, are methods that deal with systems where the whole is different from the sum of the parts. And this is one feature of that. So with a system science tradition, I would expect this to be the case. And with a Markov model, this is not the case. With a Markov model, if you consider what we have by, by its design, if we have a given state of the system uh, x uh, at a given time, if, if, if we consider um, the state of the system at time t as x sub t, and we want to get the state of the system at time x plus x sub t plus one. This is just a the um, the uh, transition matrix times its state at x sub t. This is this is a matrix operation, matrix multiplication that by definition is a linear operation. This is a linear algebra that that is, defines this. And what this means is that. If you decompose it, it most certainly is true um, that that if you have this and you consider taking x apart into its constituent pieces, that that a times x sub t. Um, so if we consider a times now s e i r as our vector, um, and this will be a four times four matrix, right? Um, the transition matrix. This actually is equal to. It's it's precisely the same as a times you know s zero 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 plus a times a, you know vector a, a column vector here like that uh, plus a times this guy here um, plus uh, a times uh, this this guy here. We could decompose it that way because it's linear algebra. Um, we could take it apart into its pieces, and and this is something which um, is a feature of you know linear algebra that that this is linear. And with a Markov model, it can be defined in in a linear algebraic sense in exactly this way. And so it is a system that I don't believe qualifies for system science designation because the whole is not different than the sum of the parts. The whole is the sum of the parts here. It's, its behavior over time is purely delineated in a linear fashion. We can analyze it in a linear way and one consequence of that is we don't have to simulate it over time to know its response at time t sub n and uh, we don't have to, um, and, and we, we can take apart a given input to under, and analyze how it responds to each of those pieces to figure out how it responds to the whole. So, so in short, Markov modeling I view as arguably a dynamic modeling tradition in the sense that at any one time you have a state and it evolves over time. It is not what I would view as a system science tradition because the whole is not different than some of the parts. Okay, so that, that's an answer to the Laffey question. Is that helpful? A lot? Okay, very good. Um, any other questions before we um, have our, our guest lecture here? I don't know if Shalyam is hoping there'll be more questions. <laughs> any more questions? Okay, well now, oh, you had a question? Sure, sure, Lavi, please. So in general, like, we have dynamic model as the big umbrella, and then under that we'll look into nonlinear and linear system then, because then from then on, from nonlinear, I can look at system dynamic, agent base, yeah. and then linear, yeah. I will look at Markov model. So is, yeah. that, is that a correct way to yeah, do yeah, it? Yeah, that's a, that's a fair way to do it. No, again, I don't want to privilege my view here. I don't want to prejudice you for just my viewpoint. 
because my viewpoint is not universally agreed upon. That's how I kind of see it, and I see system science as being the science, particularly of nonlinear traditions. But I'm sure that if you went and you, you talk with other complexity scientists or, or, or system scientists out there, you're going to find some who are going to take issue. They're going to have bones to pick with my definition. Um, for example, um, as it was defined uh, in, uh, in the US by the NIH, um, system science included some components um, that are not dynamic modeling traditions, for example, um, uh, modeling traditions um, that, that are static, like social network analysis. Um, and and th they argue, you know, that's a, that's a, a system science tradition. And yeah, um, you know, I, I guess I don't have a bone to pick with that. Um, but um, it, the point is, it's not like system science is purely within dynamic modeling or nonlinear dynamic modeling. Um, and I suppose some people could say, well, you know, linear traditions aren't really fully dynamic traditions because you don't have to, it, 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 to, to characterize the state at a given time, you don't need to engage in this sort of step-by-step -step simulation. And may, maybe people would argue that. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not one to really pick a lot of fights. Um, uh, Richard Feynman once said, he said, you know, when he was young, um, his father took him aside, and he said, um, so Richard Feynman went by the name Dick, he said, Dick, look, um, you gotta realize, 95% of the fighting in the world is, concerns the labels people put on things. He said, don't get caught up in labels in life. Don't get caught up in is this this, or is it not really that. Um, you know, you can tie yourself in knots and not really get anywhere. It's, it's just an argument about the use of words and semantics and, and concepts a lot of the time. And people get really worked up about these things because sometimes their identity is caught up in it. And he said, don't get caught up in that as a guideline in life. And, and Richard Feynman put this into use as a principle in life and went on, of course, to be one of the most, um, most prominent physicists in the 20th century. And, a Nobel, uh, 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 Nobel Prize winner in physics and one of the most highly regarded physicists of all time. Um, but he said as he grew older and as he approached his senior years, with all due respect to his father, um, while he put that into practice and lived by that, he thinks his father was actually off base. His father had missed a very important feature of the situation. Um, he said, uh, you know, um, my father had a truth there but um, there's something important he missed. He said it's not like 95% of the time. He says it's 98% of the time, or 99% of the time that it's about labels. So he said, don't get involved in labels. Like, don't get tied up in labels. The, the world, it's not gonna shake the world if it is or is not a dynamic modeling tradition or system science tradition. It helps our thinking sometimes to be clear about certain distinctions, but you know, trying to, trying to sort of police the use of words and something. It's just, um, I, I think there's better uses of our time. And, and you know, um, I think, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, I'm not sure that there is, you know, a huge benefit for defining it one way versus another way. And, um, you know, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, get involved in, in trying to sort of be the National Bureau of Standards, so to speak, to say this is dynamic modeling and that's not, and you better not call it that way. You're probably going to sue you or something like that. <laughs> that's for other people. I don't want to get involved in that. Um, maybe I'll get sued or something. Um, anyway, those are some comments, if that's helpful. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, it is my tremendous pleasure.